are two fun friends diving deep into conversations where nothing is taboo. They believe in eating dessert before dinner and wearing the bikini. They're allergic to labels, authority, and cheap shoes. Currently, they're launching themselves through life being the good time, bold enough to take risks and inquisitively asking what's next. They hail from New Hampshire, but they could be anywhere dressed in cute clothes. If they had to share a tombstone, it would read, Curiosity killed these cats. Your hosts, Lisa and Robin on the mic. Welcome. Welcome to Lisa and Robin on the mic. You are listening on 1590 AM, 95.3 FM. You can watch, stream, and listen. WSMN.live, Facebook, and YouTube. Welcome, Robin. Welcome. Happy ha- Thursday. Happy Thursday. Got some good energy. Despite George <laughs> coming in at the last minute. Well, whenever we have technical difficulties, we always have some form of angst. Angst. Yes. Angst is a good word, I think, for yeah, that. Yeah, and I think that we're trying to stream on diff- multiple platforms, so we're just definitely throwing him a curveball. Well, and, and with that much technology, something's bound to break. <laughs> and you got three per- you got three people, you got three big personalities, <laughs> like big energy, maybe that's a better word to say it. Did you yeah. see my I don't, happy I drink? I love it. I don't feel like I can hear me. Can you hear me? I can hear you fine. Good. I love it. It's tropical. Reminds me of vacation. I know. We're, we're trying to keep the vacation got vibe going. I got vacation nails. You've got your vacation dress. I've got my vacation drink. And, well, and you got flowers. You got your tropical flowers on your shirt. I got my J-Lo ring on. Like, I'm keeping that alive. Yeah. I do. I think it helps me stay in that vibration. Yep. So I, I have a question for you. Actually, I don't know where to start. Okay, first we're going to say, if you're in Nashua today, there is a Nashua International... George put up a live cam. Yep, a live cam that shows a Nashua Nashua International Sculpture Symposium where multiple international sculptors are going to come on Pine Street and start carving statues live. I don't know if it's happening today. I believe it's happening today. We have someone from France, someone from New Zealand, and then... If you go on our Nashua Public Television channel, if you're in Nashua, you can actually see it being broadcast live now. Is that channel six? That's a good question. There's a six up there, so I don't know if that was if that helps. Yeah, hopefully. If not, check your comments. You might be able to follow. Go on to WSMN two on the on the web, and it might have a link Mm -hmm. to our public radio station or public TV. Yeah, I think you can probably just go Nashua Public. TV direct yeah. maybe maybe we don't know <laughs> it's kind of a gray and rainy day outside today it's kind of bleh, dreary so we definitely need to bring some big energy have some good laughs raise the vibration because you know the weather definitely I think lowers your energy level oh I woke up tired and I got a good night's sleep too when I woke up just like ugh, no <laughs> this is not the right weather for my mood today I know I'm at that phase in my life where like my eyes open I'm kind of apprehensive like (laughs) what time is it do I want to know kind of reach over so I think I went to bed like I fell asleep and I did put myself to bed nobody had to wake me up so I was like hey I'm doing good Mm -hmm. I actually just kind of scooted off the couch and I was like I'm going to bed and he's like what (laughs) where are you going (laughs) isn't it funny how (laughs) Well, you and I have that same thing. Like, if I could sleep in my bed the way I sleep on the couch, yes, life would be amazing. Man, I think I would be a powerhouse. I, I probably would. could be president of the, you know, just <laughs> of all the states. All, yes, all of them. <laughs> of all, the, I don't know if I want to be that, but <laughs> I could be right. if I was rested. <laughs> right. So I just, so I did. I was like ten o'clock. I got up and went to bed. And this morning, I woke up and I'm like, I can see the daylight. And I'm like, uh oh, do I want to lean over and know what time it is? And it was like 6.16, and I'm like, hey, I made it. That's a perfect time. You made it through the night, yes. sleeping through the night. It wasn't like 4 or 3. or. I know. If someone had told me that I was going to revert back to infancy where I woke up every three hours in the night. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, so I have a question for you. Okay. Um, do you like brownies? Not my favorite dessert, but I do like them. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's my favorite dessert, but. Every once in a while, good brownie. So do you, what part do you like the best? Do you like the edges, edges. or the middle? Edges. Oh, I knew that's why I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your favorite part, yes. too? So for Mother's Day, um, the kids were asking me, like, what do you want for dessert? And I'm, I really haven't been in a dessert or a sweet kind of a mood. 
I'm not really ready for ice cream. So I'm like, eh, and I don't really want cake. So I was like, hey, how about we do brownie sundaes? And we'll invite her boyfriend's kids, her, his siblings over. So we had, you know, six, you know, we had six teenagers over for brownie sundaes. And we got all the toppings, we got pineapples and strawberries, and there's a lemon cheesecake ice cream, and you mix that with a little bit of strawberry ice cream. It's really good. Hot fudge, all the works. Now I want brownies. Now I, I totally know. want brownies. So we got two kinds. <laughs> we got the chewy, chewy fudge brownies, and then we got the Giardelli with the chocolate chips in it. So we did a comparison. But at our house, and I don't know if anybody else has this, everybody just cuts out, like, so we, on the dish, Everybody just cuts out the piece that they want. So it's like, it's, it's not, it's not random and it's not uniform. It's all this chaotic pieces of <laughs> missing brownies. It's like a puzzle, <laughs> like missing some pieces. It's like a Jenga where there's an L yes. and there's <laughs> some squares. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I, I used to just cut out all the edge as soon as I baked them. And as soon as they got cool, I would cut the edges out and just take them out. And I'm like, I'm not giving it anybody <laughs> opportunity. <laughs> Those are my edges. I bought it. <laughs> I made it. We made. We want mine. Mama to be happy. We want Mama to be happy, and she wants edges. I do. So I only like the Giardelli with the chocolate chips in them. Yes. The triple and all of the brownies. I could say no to. I don't like them when they're dry and cake like. Mm -hmm. I like them when they're chewy, not super fudgy, but just that kind of. I'm also not a big molten lava cake dessert. Either. No, that I don't like chocolate cake. I don't like chocolate cake either. And I'm not a big chocolate ice cream person, but I love chocolate. I like good chocolate ice cream. Everyone. I like chocolate with almonds. Chocolate ice cream with mm. almonds in it. And it's hard to find because sometimes they'll do the um, chocolate coating on the almonds. Mm -hmm. and you can't really taste it. But I like the texture and I like that little bit of flavor that it gives to it. When we were on vacation, we got one scoop of ice cream that the three of us shared oh, that was because nice. I had to pee in the bathroom and it was only for customers. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, I'll get an ice cream. And we had a dreamsicle, which was orange sherbet ice cream mixed with vanilla ice cream. And that was light and summery. Yes. And cool. I used to work in an ice cream store. That was my first job besides babysitting outside of the house. I have to remember the name of that place because that is a really good ice cream shop. I think I took a picture of I might the have sign. I might have sent a picture to um, Chris, too, and asking where it was. My favorite, favorite. And see, that's when you cook and you make stuff at home, It's then it's hard to go out and spend money. For me, it's hard to spend money on something that I know that's not going to satisfy my taste buds. So I found a recipe online that it's for homemade peach ice cream. Mm -hmm. And I actually use nectarines in it because they are, they have a tangier, it's a tangier flavor, sweet and tangy flavor. And I mix, make that with some strawberry. So it's a peach strawberry ice cream. And it's so good. So I think you have to make that for me because there's a peach ice cream that is made at the beach plum. <coughs> And they only have it one month a year. Oh. So the rest of the year, I want peach ice cream that I can't have. Well, we'll have to take the Daily Fork on the road and go up and do yes, that. Yes, yes. Because I, I don't like when you, I, I'm hesitant to buy peach ice cream when they say it's a new flavor or, hey, peach is out. It just never has the same. It's never enough peach flavor. Yeah, and I don't like artificial flavor. Like, I don't like strawberry ice cream that has an artificial flavor to it. I um, agree. Is it? I, I just ran a blank. Oh, haagen has good strawberry ice cream. They have, their ice cream is the perfect texture. Yes. It's creamy. Yeah. Well, so when I learned making my own ice cream, the more fat content, because <coughs> you know a lot of times you make homemade ice cream and it melts so quickly like you can barely scoop it into a cone. So my recipe is you, it's got eggs, I can't remember, like four eggs or six eggs in it. It's got heavy cream. Um, so it's definitely not healthy, but it is it is it's really high in protein, apparently, it with is all the eggs. Really good. <laughs> so you cook that, and then you let that sit. You mix that, and you let mix, and you let that sit in the refrigerator overnight. But having that fat content in it makes it stay firm, congealed. Yeah. Yes. So George let us know that the sculpture that we were talking about this morning is viewable live at National Public Television YouTube as well as the Nashua Public Television. So you can go on YouTube, type in Nashua Public Television, and you can actually watch them live doing these sculptures today, which is very, very cool. Uh, do we know what time they're going to start? Maybe when it stops raining. 
as as it pops up, Evan as we Morse see, is from the U.S. So as we see people wander on, we'll we'll let you know, and we'll tell you to head over to Pine Street. Hopefully, it happens before noon. Yeah, I'd like to see him start. I'd like to see him start I know. sculpting. I would too. We'll, we'll could totally get involved. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to tell you, I hate the supermarket shopping mm-hmm. aspect of cooking. I love to cook, but I hate going to the store because you have to go to the store a million times. And I used to not, it used to be, it was my first chore that I ever did as a child. My mother would be like, do you want to walk to the store? Because I did want to leave the street. She would give me cash. I would go buy just a couple of things that would be, be able to have the, my skinny small kid arms carry and mm-hmm. then I would always buy myself a treat with the leftover money that was that's you know, the, the deal that's the deal I used to buy magic middle cookies <laughs> what's magic middle cookies you've never had magic middle cookies are they so the ones that have like the coating and you bite into it and has marshmallow inside nope they don't make them anymore. I'm sure because there was some chemical that we're not allowed to eat anymore. <laughs> However, it was magic middle. They were chocolate chip cookies, and in the middle there was like a piece of chocolate, like a fudge piece of chocolate that oh. was always somewhat um, not melted, but somewhat soft and kind of soft. Gooey. And they were amazing for a store-bought cookie because I'm not a store-bought cookie person. Wow. And they were amazing, but that was what I normally bought myself. But anyways... And then I went into a Twix phase. But one of the things that I did not mind was being able to, you know, spend money that wasn't mine. (laughs) I never minded It's always easier to spend somebody else's money. And then you start, you know, you write a cookbook and you're spending outrageous amounts of money all the time on testing. And then the price of food goes up. And then all of a sudden, everyone at the supermarket did not get trained to work at the supermarket. And I say this across most supermarkets because I visit supermarkets in several different towns because as I'm selling real estate and I'm in Hooksett, I'll go to a Hooksett supermarket or a Bedford or a Nashua or an Amherst supermarket. Everyone forgot how to bag. They like lie down things that should be standing up. Like when I worked at the supermarket, we watched a half an hour video about how to bag. Really? Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, I don't like when they just give you one thing in, when they, they give you one thing in a bag. It's like, I just, they put my shampoo in the bag. Can't you put it in with something else? Like, yes. I, it, to me, that's a waste of bag. Or, I do appreciate this one guy at Market Basket. I had, I, I don't know, I had, I probably had 15 items because I was in this, in that quick checkout he packed every single thing in that bag. It was bulging, and I thought, I mean, the handles were stretching, but I was like, I love you, kid. <laughs> See, and I can't stand, you know, I'd rather if I, that. Can't, I can't, you know, then they fill the bag so much that you can't put the two loops together, so I'm trying to hold the loops with the last tenth of a f- finger yeah. nail <laughs> on my thumb, and I'm trying to lug 75 pounds with the ends of my fingernails, you know, yes. carrying it to and from. And I drive a truck. Stuff rolls around a lot. It's a very, like, loose driving vehicle. Well, the new thing is now I I always say paper and plastic. And certain supermarkets have paper bags that fit inside the plastic bags, and some don't. So I said paper and plastic, and the woman filled them all with paper. And I said, what happened to the paper and plastic? And she said, yeah, I'm going to put them in the plastic bag. I said, you have filled them so much not in the plastic bag that you're never going to be able to put them in. You're going to break them. She goes, no, she put, she tries twice to put it in a plastic bag and she just obliterates the plastic bag because the bags are too big. That's when you need your megaphone. I'm like, told you. <laughs> and I said, why don't we just do this? So I unpa- I'm unpacking it. Now I'm creating this entire line. Right. And I'm just like, I hate being here. They don't want me here. <laughs> I just feel like, you know, this isn't the vibe I'm going for. You know, right. I'm going to need a nap after this <laughs> excursion to the supermarket. Yeah. Me having to delegate your job is taxing me. I'm yes. going to need a nap. Yes. And why are my tomatoes underneath? Like, why are you putting cherry tomatoes underneath cans of things? That That's never the organ, you know. And I think it's just because they must not be trained. And when I guess when I worked at a supermarket, I knew had a bag, not only because of the video, but because I carried my own bags home. So you had to pack a bag properly or you weren't bringing that back. Right. Your life was going to be a living hell you walking had to make it so that you could carry five, it. you know, um, st- blocks. Street I had to blocks. personalize my own grocery cart, man. Like, <laughs> this is mine. <laughs> so I so one thing I don't like to do is go on Saturdays. I don't like mm. to go on a weekend. That's my choice because it's the most stocked a supermarket ever is. But everybody's there. It's really crowded. 
I just, I just can't, st- I can't stand being there. Like it's the least, the chore I least like to do. I avoid, I avoid chores and grocery shopping. Like at all costs on the weekends. Yeah, I don't want to clean on a Saturday. That's not what Saturdays. And I think that's about. probably some like childhood trauma that I still haven't gotten over. You know, my mom would do you know list and stuff, and like Saturday mornings you get up and it's like cleaning day. And I understand from an adult's perspective. But I feel like we're out of school. We have it's free time. Let's have fun, and free time should be fun. And maybe that is my resistance to work. Period. Like I mean, I feel like I'm a hard worker, right? Um, but I do. But the feel nine like to five, whatever that nine to five schedule that requires work here, and then this free time yes. is more chores. Yes, it's like well, if I'm working here, I don't want this free time to be chores. Yes. So I think that I was. See, I didn't know the word. I didn't know the word for it then, but I think I was always a front loader. Mm -hmm. I'd rather stack all my stuff and get everything done and get it out of the way. And then I have the rest of the afternoon free, the after the evening free. I'd rather break it down. I think we've actually talked about this too. We we actually have. Um, How I do clean my bathrooms on different days and, you know, then it's all done. Because I started, it was last October because I've been doing it that way. (laughs) (laughs) I just, to me, I just think it makes it so much easier I can walk through and I can spray all the I can spray all the showers, the bathrooms, the toilets. I can go. So by the time I go back to the first one, you know, it's ready. They're all ready, and it's just one fell swoop, and then we're done. And then it's just spot touching up, spot cleaning the rest of the time. And you know, I, God I love Jarvis has the best thing that they ever invented. Oh, the robot that <laughs> yeah, the robot vacuums. our Jarvis yes our um, Roomba Roomba yeah okay or Zoom I don't know what it is no it's now. Roomba I think know if we have a Roomba but it's um oh there's a different brand of them I only thought there was one maybe it is a Roomba I there's I think there's a couple of brands there might be like an off market uh, off market brand or something but I tell you what it is a lifesaver yeah I, I love it it just it I feel like it frees up so much time it does a good job every once in a while you know you get a text you know Jarvis calls you and like hey I'm stuck I'm stuck <laughs> <laughs> help <laughs> and then you gotta go find him yeah so you never know where he is, so you're, you know, hunting for him. But So this Saturday, I went to the supermarket on a Saturday. I mean, yeah, I went to the supermarket. And I thought, I avoided going to the su- I went to the supermarket a couple of times during the week, but I avoided, like, real shopping. And I'm like, I need to do a real shopping. I still hadn't really shopped from vacation. And I thought, I love various podcasts. I love Andrew Huberman. I like Joe Rogan. I like mm-hmm. Jonko Willicks. I never say his name right. Um, I love these guys. And all they do is talk about, you know, they're getting up at four in the morning. They're killing it. These success <laughs> things, all of these things. And I think nobody talks about doing the thing you don't want to do when you don't want to do it, like food shopping on a Saturday. Mm-hmm. And I think we get overwhelmed by these morning routines and these and I'm not criticizing those people for having those morning routines. They work amazing for them. And some people might like it. Some people might like the chaos and yes. standing in line and fighting with people over <laughs> produce. But <laughs> on a Saturday morning. We don't. But the other thing is, it's like, this is discipline too. Yes. Doing. And so I think we think it discipline or being motivated has to have a certain look and feel to it because It's been stated over and over. What does your morning routine look like? What does your fitness thing look like? What is this? Sometimes the discipline and all of that comes in the millions of other little things that we do that we don't count for that. And then the person who is working, you know, 10 to 10, four days a week because they've got doubles all week and, you know, they only have one day off because then they go to a second job. The idea of a morning routine you know, 20 minutes of meditation, a 40 minute workout, this and this and this is like, that's not possible. So I must not be successful because I'm not following this very specific, very well talked about uh, routine. When your routine is your routine, whatever's working for you works for you, but also understand that sometimes discipline is just doing the thing you don't want to do when you don't want to do it. Yes. Yes. And so I was walking around going, Joe Rogan, look at me now. I'm food shopping on a Saturday. <laughs> and I didn't have to get up at 4 a.m. to do it. <laughs> like, I will try to go if I have to go. I used to go to the supermarket after a shift at midnight because nobody was there. Yeah. And I had the whole supermarket. Myself. So I have shopped very early. And if you all. go really early in the morning, too, then it's not bad. But sometimes it's unavoidable. You have to. Or sometimes I will try and find, like, a smaller store, a market, Instead of beating that, you know, I just, you cringe when you see the parking lot. I get okay. 
so for a while I was only shopping at Whole Foods because they packed my groceries. They were the only ones who had my bo- bagging down. Yeah. And it just got so expensive. And when Amazon took them over, they stopped carrying the brands I was going there for. Yeah. And so now I have to shop. I can't get all my brands at one supermarket, so I have to shop at multiple supermarkets. But the, the bagging part of it is a nightmare. And I, I'll often say, let me bag it. And then they're like, no. And it's well, like, but I you bag it so terribly. I line my stuff up when I'm putting it on the belt. I line exactly it up. how I want it. Yes. <laughs> I put all the meats together. I put all the frozen stuff together. I put all my vegetables together, dry goods. I, they're all good. So like when it comes across, like boom, boom, boom. Like I have actually done majority of your work for you. Mm-hmm. You just have to follow my pattern. Mm-hmm. I don't think they'd see the pattern. No, they don't <laughs> see the pattern. And I, th- and I, and I think... It's sort of that people just don't care, right? Yeah. Because I, I had said something to someone, and I said, why would you put that on top of that? And they had no, like, I was just like, you, now I have to get another one. You broke, you broke it. I haven't even left the store, and you broke it. Why would you do that? I had something that was like, uh, yes. it was a piece of fruit, and it was in those plastic containers, and you, I had bought whatever, um, like orange juice or something that was heavy, and w- and they put it on top and it crushed it. And I'm like, oh, why would you do that? You know, because you don't because care. Because they don't care, and you just you didn't think about it. But I wonder too if getting people getting groceries delivered has changed the way it has. I it, think. And so, do they not feel? You know, we've got big companies, eh, big grocery stores. That's a really good point. And they're not training. They're not training. So I feel like, you know, over the years, customer service has slacked off over and over again. And you're Mm -hmm. not training. I think that maybe big companies have changed their standard of what customer service looks like. Or they're not holding they're not holding their employees. You know, I went to a a, a property management seminar, real estate managers seminar. It's global. Everyone comes. And I was talking to someone and I said, you know, I'm really just kind of tired of everyone's attitude. Everyone's. The fact that they show up is the, you know, in the, say, the contractor world or any of these worlds. I wasn't even talking about any of that, supermarkets or restaurants. I was just like, everybody acts like they're here and that's enough. Right. I showed up, so. You know, like, like, oh, you won because you arrived. Right. And, okay, well, what does the eight hours that you're here look like? (laughs) Well, but a lot of times, but that's the way it goes. You know, I'm going to work an eight-hour shift, and whether I service 100 people or whether I'm going to service two, it doesn't matter to me. So, you know what he said to me? He said, I think going forward, the way you differentiate yourself is you do care, and then people just start, are willing to pay more because they're so sick of the not caring. And so there will be the people who would just want cheap, and they'll be miserable and do the cheap thing. But then some people will start prioritizing. Mm. I will have to pay a little bit more, but I just want a better experience. I just want to spend money and not be aggravated. I just want to. And I think at some point, I think various stores are going to have to stop the self-checkout. I don't know how the self-checkout is made. It's a business model. Uh, Yeah, go to Walmart on a Saturday to get plants. And, you know, you're stuck in line because they won't open the garden center checkout because I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know if I... They don't have enough people to cover a shift. They don't. I don't think they properly staff. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can walk through the store and you see people standing around having a team meeting. But, you know, you've got what they're doing is they're forcing everybody to use the conveyor belt. So now you're standing behind people that don't know how to check out. They're bagging their they own groceries. They haven't been trained. <laughs> You're right. They're bagging their own (laughs) groceries. And then, you know, you go through produce where you got to weigh it, look the item up. You know, these are time eaters for everything else. And it's like it's not efficient. It doesn't flow. But customer service is gone out the window. It's kind of the same thing about. Well, there's no customer service because there's no employees. (laughs) But I (laughs) I also think companies don't aren't pushing it either. It's like it's all. It, service-based industries aren't about customer service anymore. It's about money. The bottom mm-hmm. line is, you know, about money. I could tell you a nightmare story for pool company, but yeah, we won't. We won't do. That. <laughs> not ready to blast <laughs> that one yet. But so when you got back from vacation, like so, the first chore that like I don't want to do is food shopping. We decided on vacation, even though there was a full kitchen that we weren't gonna cook because we wanted to experience restaurants and just experience out because we do that yes. in our regular lives. But when I came home, I was very inspired <laughs> to start cooking again. And one of the things I made was corned beef hash 
Eggs Benedict. Oh, yum. I know where you got the idea from. <laughs> yes, we went to Clear Sky and they had corned beef hash over, and it was real corned beef hash. It wasn't a canned corned yes. beef ha- hash. And it was delicious. It was really good. And then they put it over p- breakfast potatoes. Then they had the corned beef hash. Then they had poached eggs and hollandaise sauce. And it was delicious. So I made a version, but I wasn't able to get full corned beef. So I used the can, Hormel. Yep. And I fried that up so it ended up getting brown. Mm, and then I used that, and it was to die for. Oh, that's good. That's good. So my takeaway, what I brought home, it actually took me. So we landed on a we landed on Friday. Mm-hmm. Yes. So Saturday and Sunday we kind of limped along. I I ran to the grocery store early so I could just pick up a few things of what we we're having for dinner because I'm like, mm, no, I'm not doing that, <laughs> and I'm just not ready to get back into it. <laughs> I'm still on vacation mode. <laughs> so one of the things that so I one of the things that I like when we travel and go to a do, new place, you know, we always critique it. Like, oh, what is that flavor? What is this? What is that? Which we're trying to recreate. How would I make this at home? What yes. are the flavors in it? What would I add? Or like, yes, what are the flavors in it? Um, is there something that I could do to make it better? Number one, I think lemon juice makes almost everything better because it never picks up the taste of the lemon. It just kind of adds a brightness. It it enhances the flavor yeah. of it's like it pulls out. It's just like salt on tomatoes. Yeah. You know, salt is very good on certain things like it, it changes the like an egg, an avocado and a tomato. Yes. You can't have those things unsalted, yes. in my opinion. Yes. In potato mashed potatoes. Potatoes, yes, you're right. A little bit, but I, but I use um, sometimes I'll put Parmesan cheese and I'll put garlic in my mashed potatoes, and so with the butter, and the butter is salted. Mm-hmm. So by the time that you have mixed all of those together, you might just need like a little bit of salt and meat and steak. Yes, I think steak. Okay, makes you need to salt everything. <laughs> <laughs> we stand corrected, <laughs> but salt. Yeah, so we we learned last week. That, you know, salt is good for you, but it actually salt is good in using it proportionately you know I hate people will you know just grab the salt shaker and just start salting before they taste anything it's like no you don't know you don't enjoy food <laughs> right you don't enjoy food well I think that grows up so I salted Chinese food like MSG salty Chinese food I used to salt it and I wow. think that's because I grew up eating only processed food which has so many chemicals in it yes including salt sodium that Everything tasted flat if it wasn't salted. So one yeah. of the hardest things for me to give up was salt. Mm. And to get proportionate to salt. I mean, I used to put like a, a handful of salt in boiling water for pasta. I, wow. I used to really salt everything. And then I had to learn to cook. When I learned to cook for yeah. myself, I really learned what a certain amount of salt was. So, do you know, in in the South, growing up... You know, watermelon, so my grandparents would grow watermelon and cantaloupe and all these things. We had salt on our watermelon. Really? So my grandmother would slice up the, you know, slice it up into, you know, watermelon slices. And there was always a big salt shaker on the table, like on the picnic table. Would she bring that out? The salt cantaloupe and watermelon. That's interesting. There's a recipe, I forget where I saw it, for watermelon feta a little bit of onion and like a salad oh, dressing. Oh, we, we've had that. There's also a um I wonder if the salt for that. There's like a mandarin orange with a red onion, kind of a vinaigrette salad that's really good too, but that also calls us like salt on the mandarin oranges. Mm. <coughs> and how come you can't buy can you buy a mandarin orange like a whole mandarin orange? Like what is a mandarin orange? I was thinking about that the other day. The only time you can get mandarin oranges is in the juice in the can. <laughs> no, I think they sell them. They're only one time a year, and they're the babies. So instead of getting um, like, like clementine, clementines, yeah. yes, they're mandarins. Huh? I it just I guess I've never paid attention to it, and it was like a random thought driving down the road the other day. Like, and they're perfect because they're perfectly juicy. Yes, they are good. I feel like the smaller oranges are always juicy, where you it's hit or miss on the bigger oranges. Mm. So my takeaway: so I had a. Um, so your daughter fell in love with chimichurri sauce. Yes. So I was going to say, so I had always kind of shied away from it because we had chimichurri one sauce at a restaurant. And I was like, I, it had a little bit of a sweetness to it. And I was like, mm, I don't really, I don't like sweet 
I, I'm not a big fan of, like, if it's a dessert, then I'm sweet. I don't like the sweet and salty. I'm mm-hmm. not a big, like, I don't like chocolate-covered pretzels. Mm-hmm. Um, it just had a funny flavor to it, and I don't like it. Maybe it was a, it was had too much cilantro, and it had, like, a sweetness to it. So I'm like, mm, I don't like that. And chimichurri is supposed to be parsley. So we did. So we did. We actually made, so we were having steaks for Mother's Day, and she and I made our own chimichurri sauce. It is amazing and you know get it tell me how you made yours well she actually sent me the recipe Mm -hmm. we used um three garlic cloves Mm -hmm. you take olive oil lemon parsley cilantro Mm. and oregano Mm. so i do mine a little different interesting i can't wait to have so you chop so you chop everything up in the food processor except for the oh um not scallions. What green are onions? No, the other one. I shallots? Mean, yeah, shallots. I mean, green onions. But yeah. I don't know why shallots is like away from my <laughs> brain. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so you take one shallot, you chop it up. So you can, you could tweak it a little bit more. I think the next time I would put maybe two shallots in it. But it came out really good. So you chop all of that stuff up in the processor, except for your parsley and your cilantro. You save that for last. You kind of just keep pushing you kind of just keep pushing the garlic and the shallots and the olive oil. Oh, red wine vinegar. Mm-hmm. You kind of just keep pushing that down into the food processor. And then when that's the consistency that you like, then you add the parsley and the cilantro. And it says that you can actually freeze it. So what I want to do mm. is get these little containers or maybe like Ice a cube. Oh, that's a great idea. And then you can make cubes of them, and then they will be the individual amount. So if you have two people, you'd use two cubes. If you had four people, you could use four cubes. Yes. So we actually did, we toasted some French bread and put a little bit of, um, so I did mozzarella. Mm -hmm. Instead of doing like a bruschetta or a caprese, I did a slice of tomato, add a little salt and pepper, fresh mozzarella on it, and then you drizzle the chimichurri sauce on it. Mm. It is so good. So it's almost like a reverse pesto. Yes. Yeah, the yeah. way you were using it. So I love chimichurri sauce. It's one of my favorite steak sauces. Yes. So normally when a place has it, I will try it. But I use a serrano pepper in mine Ooh. to kind of give it a little bit of flavor and heat. If I don't have a serrano pepper, I will use red pepper flakes. I did u- I did put a little crushed red mm-hmm. pepper in it. So what that so we had that made. Mm-hmm. <coughs> and I think it was at Doc Ford's. Um, restaurant down in Florida that we had. I think I had I had a citrus, creamy citrus pasta and shrimp recipe. I was like, this is really good. It was a little bit soupier than it was a little bit creamier than I than I like. I'm not I'm not a big cream sauce mm-hmm. fan. Like Alfredo, you wouldn't just have an Alfredo sauce. Yeah, maybe a light. Like, I don't like it when it's just heavy, heavy. Mm-hmm. Like, coat it. Coat the pasta. Enough to coat the pasta and stuff like but that. Not make but I soup. don't a soup in the bottom of it. So I took some butter. I took butter and garlic, crushed red pepper, and a little bit of oregano. Kind of just sauteed that in the pan. And I was like, hmm, that doesn't matter. So I added a little bit of white wine white wine to my base and then I added chimichurri sauce Mm. I I did like two big like tablespoons of the chimichurri sauce just kind of it was so it was two of us eating and I melted all of that together add a little pepper add a little more crushed red pepper and added lemon and I just so I squeezed a half of a lemon into that Mm -hmm. and then I added my pasta into that. And then I, or actually before I added my pasta. Did you have any cream? I took a half a jar of extra creamy Alfredo sauce. I don't know if it was like Bertoli mm-hmm. or I don't know what the big market. There's a, a fam- okay. there's a big brand and okay. you would recognize it's kind of a square. Yes, yeah, I think jar. it's Bertoli. So they had, I had that in my, and I was like, I don't really want to make my cream sauce. So I used not even a half a jar of that, and I added that to it. And so then I added my more lemon to it and just a little more seasoning um, just to get the flavor that I wanted. Then I added my pasta into that, and then I cut up cherry tomatoes. And once you got those a little bit, once you got those a little bit warm, 
it's almost like you blanch them a little bit. So in a separate pan, I had marinated, I had marinated and coated some shrimp and like a little Cajun seasoning spice. And I almost, I just pan fry those in a little bit of oil just to kind of crisp out the outside of it. And then I throw those into the pan. And I did a couple of pieces of bacon and you make them really extra crispy. So I threw the shrimp into there and you mix it all into the noodles. And then you break the, so I, what I did is you plate it, put it in your pasta bowl, and then you sprinkle the bacon on top of that. And then you do fresh Parmesan or Asiago mm. cheese on top of that. It is. I'm I like, will request that at your house, please. I'm going to make it for you guys. Yeah. If we, Chris is like, if we got this at a restaurant, I would be very happy. I'm yes. Like, yeah. I, if I paid $35 for that meal, I'd be very yeah, happy for Yeah, $35 for pasta like this? Absolutely. And it's so easy. Yeah. It sounds it sounds quick, too, because of the shrimp. The shrimp doesn't take a long time. I, so we went to Salt Rock Grill in Indian Shores, and I had a citrus scallop pasta so they put two scallops together wrapped it in bacon and then put it over the citrus citrus pasta i tried to recreate that on friday and i asked them is there any way to make the bacon crispy and they were like well we'll try and i was like can you even cook the bacon a little bit before you start wrapping it around the because I like crispy bacon. I don't like chewy. My guess is it might have come pre wrapped, and they're not going to they're not going to wrap the scallop it. because they, why wouldn't they? And the answer for me is just cook your bacon in the bacon fat, cook your scallops, and then make your pasta, and yeah. then add it all at the end. They don't have to be wrapped. They sear scall- it. Yeah. yeah, sear it because you need everything to be the right texture. The because the scallops oh no, almost don't get cooked enough. Because the bacon is insulating them. Yep. And then the bacon is not cooked at, at all enough. So I ended up leaving most of that and eating the pasta at mm-hmm. the restaurant. But I made it at home and I will make it for you. It's perfect. So I bet if you, <clears throat> instead of using bacon, I bet if you could cut, you know how it's like you can buy prosciutto in mm-hmm. like little thin strips. I bet you could actually take your kitchen shears and and trim them I so think wrapping them when you're home do you want extra steps like that though but think about if you take a thin piece of prosciutto and you wrap it around your scallop <coughs> i mean if you want wrapped yes if yes. you want it wrapped um i think it would crisp it's so thin and it Pancetta has that would work too yes so we were talking about pasta well you know random thought you were talking about bone marrow in red sauce yes so we just did, what was the, um, what was the, the ham that you just said? Uh, it's not so prosciutto. Um, prosciutto. Oh, pancetta. Oh, pancetta. Yeah, so I used to buy the pancetta crumbles and I would put that in my red sauce mm. instead of doing like, because um, when we were in Italy, up in northern Italy, I was asking her what her arbiata sauce is and she was like, yeah, we use pancetta. They use pancetta like, for everything, I feel. Yes. I feel like it's like, oh, what's making that delicious? Well, and it's, it's kinda, like it's bacon. It's kind of like bacon, but I, you know, I, you it's really... like belly fat, right? You really need that fat to bring the flavor, I think. Yes. It just adds a richness to it. I also have added a little bit of red wine to my sauce too. It darkens the color, but it adds just kind of a... a depth. A, yes. A nice A richness, depth. a boldness. Yeah. So but. my so I have quick tomato sauce that I can make in half an hour that tastes like it's a couple of hours. And that's because I use a saute pan and I boil out the liquid so yes. it really condenses down. But then I make a gravy that takes multiple hours. And that's when I add steak. I add meatballs. I mm-hmm. add country style pork ribs on the bone. And the sauce is done when the bones have separated from the meat. And so when you're stirring, you'll just pull up a bone. You're like, okay, this the sauce is done. And it's cooked very, very, very low on the stove. And there's something about the bone marrow that goes in mm. that makes the gravy have like this unctuous, like umami quality where you don't know what it is. And yeah. it's just whatever is going on in the bone for four hours mm-hmm. into the sauce. But my gravy is fantastic. And I always eat my gravy with ravioli for some reason. Oh, that cheesy, that. it's like something to cut how rich the sauce yes. is because the sauce is so rich. I like taking the hot Italian sausages and I will I will slightly cook them just to brown brown the outside of it or I'll cook them 
I'll cook them in the pan to kind of crisp the outside of it, but I'll cut them and I'll put them in slices and I'll add that to a sauce. And I like serving that over tortellini because mm-hmm. I think that those two. Yeah, they're perfect. They two balance each other. And I, I love those. I went to go buy tortellini the other day because I was making a new recipe and I'm like, oh, I'm going to make it with tortellini. And the tortellini was nine ninety nine. It's getting expensive. And I was like, all right, I'm not making tortellini. I'm just making regular old rigatoni. <laughs> but since we're speaking of food, we should probably do a shout out to Brian at Kinsley <gasps> Pizza. Yes. We're starting to talk about um, Italian. We're going to, we're and coming. Pizza. We are coming. Not today, Brian, but we're coming. we are going to be there we're after our show you. next Thursday. And another business that we have in, at 11 o'clock, 1107, We are going to have a guest on. We're going to have Jen McLaren from the Dew Collective. She owns two floral shops, one in Newburyport and one in Manchester. And we're going to have her on. And that's we're going to have a great time with her. So we have that coming up. I wanted to ask you, there was another question I wanted to ask you. So you continue to talk to life on my question. Who knows what we're going to talk about. Hey, so on my way here, here's a random fun fact that I will share with you guys that I thought was very interesting. You know, if you know me by now. You know your fun facts. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's, it's more interesting. So you know that I'm always talking about vibration. I'm talking about energy. So on the way over here, I was listening to, I was listening to a book. And Dr. Mazzaro Emoto, so I, I might have butchered his name. Um, he was like 1940s to, or that's not right, 1970s to something. He believes that he did a study with water in words, and he believes that words actually have an impact on us. So he took these jars, he took these jars of water, containers of water, and put positive words on some of them, like love, gratitude. He put words on negative jar on jar negative words on jars like you're foolish, you know, stupid, dumb. Stuck them into the freezer to see what would happen. And because he believes that, you know, if wa- if words are energy, and water is an absorber of energy. Oh, I didn't know that. He wanted to do a study of them. Mm-hmm. So. What he found was that the words, the positive words, the two most profound um, ice crystals that were formed were love and gratitude. Hmm. And out of the negative words, they were the ice crystals form. It was distorted and just unappealing. And he's like, so now think about the effect of of your words, because our bodies are mostly water. Mm hmm. And I just thought that was interesting. And I'm like, I, that's what I want to share with you guys. Like, And we love words. Yes. <laughs> we're, we're word people. I know sometimes on some days my advanced maternal brain <laughs> fails to pull the correct word out of the folder in my brain. So I get that you're probably like, how could she be a word person? And in my head, I know I'm not pulling the correct word, which drives me Right. So crazy. then you're kind of going through your Rolodex and, you know, both of us are verbal processors. So you have to bear with us as we roll down the <gasps> right. Rolodex and then to a week find the later, right word. Or at three o'clock in the morning, I'm like, oh, that was the right word. <laughs> well, I think it's because when you realize the power of words, you're scrolling through to find the right word that conveys the level of impact that it's it that it's touched you with right and the, and sometimes it's like exacting that's not the feeling i mean that's not the feeling i mean yes. this other word is more exacting yes to say it. yeah and i i've always loved adjectives well oh that's funny do you remember mad libs growing up yes oh i my loved gosh. mad libs so going to the beach like if we so even when i we got those tell in, everybody what mad libs is is it mad libs still a thing it's got to be. So Mad Libs is a, it's a book and it has a story written for you and you have to fill in the blanks. So there's nouns, verbs, pronouns, adjectives. So it's say Robin is going to the blank and she brings blank. So it's Robin could go to the beach and she brings Lisa. Robin can go to the cave and bring flashlights. Like you can make the story. Right. However you want. And so, you know, I we al- I always loved when the adjectives came because we were like crusty and crunchy and <laughs> slimy and, you know, all the gross words. But reading the story, it was so much fun. And I was like, my sister and I had that. So I brought that into when I w- we were, when my kids were little. And we would go on trips. And so they... Perfect road trip. Yes. 
because it does, it, it, you know, it eats up a lot of time, but it's fun while you're doing it. So. And because you don't know what you're doing, because as, you know, give me an adjective. You don't know what the story is yet, and you're just shouting out words. You yes. have no idea how they're going to play out. And sometimes it's like, wow, that's really good. That came out really good. Yes. Yes. I have to look back and see if we can find our some of our old ones. I might have a, some of them in our memory box because, like, I'd like to save things so you can go back as when they were kids and you th- you like to hear how they think. And I used to always say, I love to listen to my kids talk. Like at the dinner table, we would always have conversations and I would ask them about something. And the more that they know that they have your attention, Mm -hmm. the more that they want to elaborate and expand on. So I would always ask questions and just leading questions. Never ones to put, you know, there was a guy that did the study about how we power of words that how you can influence and I think this was way back like Dateline in 2020 I don't even know if there's still a thing <clears throat> but talking about having a kid and this poli- this fire chief he had just said you have to be really careful about how you talk to people because you and especially with kids you don't want to ask leading questions because mm. kids want to naturally imp- I think we all naturally want to please and impress you know we want to give you what you want So they did this example on TV, and it says this kid, so the kid had a bad dream, and it was about a fire outside. And then, so the police chief, uh, the fire chief is asking this kid, well, how big was the fire? And he was like, well, it was pretty small. And he's like, are you sure? Like, how small? It got to the point, like, he kept asking questions. The next thing you know, the fire's inside the house. And they're inside him. And he's like, well, did you smell the smoke? Yes. And then it's like, mommy and daddy weren't at home. And so Mm -hmm. he's elaborated this whole, he's elaborated on this whole story about fire because they were being asked leading questions. Mm -hmm. And so now they don't know necessarily between fact and fiction and, Mm -hmm. you know, where to put that information. Now they're just into the story. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wow, you have to really be careful about well, your words. Well, I think we do that all the time. Yeah. I actually think, I think we're storytelling creatures. Yes. As human beings. And I don't think that we are fully aware of the impact that our, our words have on people. I'll, I think I'm, I'm very much a word person and words have always been a, a thing with me. So in an argument, I try, I know I could say something to hurt you. In real, real quick fashion, too. Yes, I could too. ruin, <laughs> I can ruin your week, <laughs> you know, pretty quickly. <laughs> because the closer you are with someone, the you know their vulnerable spots. Like you can immediately, yes, right. And I choose not to do that in the argument, right? Because I don't want to win the argument so bad by you're doing that. And you're looking at them right now, like, man, I could cut you down to the knees right now. But I know that but I I'm can't not. take those words away. Yes. And I know they will sit with you, even though they were said in an argument. And I was just trying to win the argument. So I I always was very conscientious about doing that. But it also made me not a good argument winner. Like with, you know, there there was the whole thing about my family when people are, you know, why did you stop talking to your family? Well, because I I never I was never saying the things I really wanted to say. You know, I didn't win the argument at all costs. And I think that there, I think, especially with, um, certain members of my family, the way the language was, I was always defending myself when I had never done anything wrong. But I I was always on the back foot because I was always verbally attacked. Yes. Because it's really easy from the standpoint of, I'm going to put you on the defensive because I don't want you coming. I might actually have some culpability and I don't want you able Mm -hmm. to be forward leaning on my culpability culpability so if I put you on the defensive if everything I say always puts you on your back foot and you're always on the defensive you can never be on the offensive so I think it's a strategy that people don't even know they have yes but over time it just erodes a person yes but it also doesn't realize you know you don't we don't spend a lot of time self-reflecting and we don't think about the power of our words. But then you, when people wonder, like, why don't you speak to your birth family? It's like, well, what would I speak to them about? I'm the villain in every one of the stories. Right. So <laughs> so the book that I was listening to on the way over this morning, he said, you know, words, they can, they can help, they can harm, and they can heal. And a lot of times when we say, or like, like, 
take your past, you know, some of your relatives. It's almost like a game that they're going to be, they're going to create the conflict. Because if they are the ones that have come out of the gate first, then it's almost like that's their defensive, that's their wall yes. they put up to say, nope, I'm going to get to you before you get to me. And it really has nothing to do with you. It has to do with their own, their own wounded ego, their own trauma, their own harm. And so it, it's helped me a lot of times when I'm in disagreements or I'm not, my thoughts aren't aligned with someone and they are starting to speak strong language at me. Like they got triggered. They've gotten triggered at something and it's not, Maybe it's the way I conveyed my message, but more importantly, it's how they interpret it. I've touched on a wound. And when I, when I am aware that I've triggered a wound in someone, it makes me like, hey, that's not who I want to be. So I try to tread a little bit more lightly. And I don't think we do. So it's just, it's an awareness. Yeah. When I was younger, I was just like, I'm not winning this argument. I'm not. And so that I would withdraw completely. Yes. But that was a skill I also learned in my birth family was that when you didn't like what someone had to say you just stopped talking to them yes <laughs> you just well, stopped but you know that sometimes that people aren't you know if you know growing up in a southern in a southern state and you know i mean everywhere i mean new england they, people have they have i think there's a there's a certain mannerism the, down there though i think yes in a sense of um i wouldn't say a strong family connection like a sense of unity, it's more of a sense of obligation. Mm -hmm. Like, well, you're the grandkids or you're the you're hierarchy the niece place or you're the there. nephew. Yes, there yes. is like a hierarchy or a place. Instead of just being a group of people that's related and celebrating, you know, your ties or just being with people together, it was always, some of the times it's like a competition. It's a competition or it's, the truth of the matter is, you know, I heard somebody said, no one in this world, not your parents, not your children, not your grandparents, nothing, no one owes you anything, nothing. I mean, it's your chil it's your parents' responsibility to get you, you know, to alive. adulthood Keep you alive. alive. Fed you. Yes, <laughs> but they don't owe you anything. Right. They don't owe you, you know. And I always, I always have the joke that we should call our parents by their birth names. Because when we infuse mom and dad, we have so much expectation about the way they need to be mom and dad for us. Right. Right. We're, you yeah. know, they, I, I, I forget which comedian says it, but she says it in such a way. She's like, I thank them for not being the parent that I needed them to be. Right. You know, or I forgive them for not being the parent that I needed them to be. And that's good. Find it funny. I'm, I'm forgiving you for not doing what I need. <laughs> Right. Like that, that's like a really funny way of saying it. Yes, but it's, it's true. <laughs> but it's, it's kind of true. It's like. But they get the angry at you for not showing up for what they need. They're angry because you didn't make the phone call or you don't come and visit or you don't write letters or you don't do this. They're angry at you for not putting into the relationship, but they don't put in, they don't put the relationship, they don't put into that relationship. So I feel like I trying to align myself with people who are, are willing to match my energy mm -hmm. because that's an alignment. We have the our guest that's coming up at the top of the hour is going to match and elevate. Yay. Wait till you see her. She's I, I'm absolutely in love with this woman. She has these awesome. She has a beautiful business, and she's so creative, and her brain just thinks in a slightly different way that I just want to you know put a straw in her ear and suck it all out, <laughs> <laughs> which, is, which is what we're gonna do in the next hour. I do. I love. I, that's why I, I love words because I love hearing the way people's brain thinks. Yes. Stay tuned. We'll be back. WSMN 1590, WSMN 95.3 FM, Nashua. Listen, watch, and stream at WSMN.live. Have you tried to quit drinking before, and much to your surprise and dismay, you couldn't? Have you tried therapy, meetings, and treatment programs, but still can't seem to stay stopped? Or maybe you live in fear that you'll lose your job, your home, or your family, and much more if you don't get this figured out. And soon, well, there is hope. My name is Bill Nielsen, and I'm the founder of Nascent 24 Recovery and Life Coaching. And I struggled for over a decade, yep, 10 years, trying to get it right. I lost jobs, five six-figure jobs, in fact, homes, friends, relationships, 
I thought I'd never get off the merry-go-round or the roller coaster, but I did, and I've developed a proven proprietary process that works. Why does it work? Because it addresses the root cause and not the symptoms. No more band-aids on bullet wounds. It's a 12-week journey that will transform your entire life, not just the drinking thing. I work one-on-one -on -one with every single client, and your privacy and anonymity are paramount. The great part is that you don't have to leave your home, your job, or your family. Text me the word recovery We're to 203-241-1266. That's 203-241-1266. Or visit my website, nascent24.com. N-A-S-C-E-N-T 24.com. There is a solution. Take the first step. You won't regret it. USA News. I'm Ryan Daniels. The White House standing by its strategy for supplying military aid to Israel. During a press briefing Wednesday, Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre told reporters why the administration halted a shipment of bombs earlier in the month, only to now proceed with a new billion-dollar weapons package. We've been very clear that when it comes to their security, that continues to be ironclad. There is no change there. We believe that they need to be able to defend themselves. Jean-Pierre clarified the administration remains dedicated to furnishing Israel with defensive weaponry. However, she expressed concern about the possibility of a large-scale military offensive into Rafa. She emphasized the importance of Israel presenting a plan to safeguard civilians in the southern Gaza city. On Wednesday, a barge collision damaged a bridge in Galveston, Texas. The vessel struck the railroad side of the Pelican Island Causeway, which connects Galveston to Pelican Island, the sole access point to the island. A significant section of the bridge collapsed from the impact, though officials report no injuries or rescues. Former Trump attorney Michael Cohen returns to the witness stand Thursday in the Trump New York hush money trial. The criminal trial in Manhattan recessed for the day Wednesday. During Tuesday's testimony, Trump's defense attorneys pressed Cohen about his recent book titled Revenge. Attorney Todd Blanche grilled Cohen on the book, procuring an admission it's garnered about $400,000 for the ex-Trump lawyer. When pressed, if he had referred to Trump as a, quote, boorish cartoon and a Cheeto-dusted cartoon villain, Cohen said it sounded like something he would say. Inflation is easing slightly, but prices are still elevated. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, consumer prices rose by 3.4% the previous 12 months. The cost of gas and shelter made up more than 70% of the monthly inflation figure. This is USA News. Omaha Steaks is rewriting the book on burgers with an all-new handmade texture for the juiciest home-style burgers you've ever tasted. Their pure ground burgers are made from single cuts of real aged Omaha Steaks. These are truly steaks on a bun. Filet mignon, ribeye, New York strip, sirloin, and even brisket burgers. Now is the time to experience the exclusive burger perfection flight for just $79.99. Go to omahasteaks.com and use promo code TREAT at checkout to get an extra $20 off your order plus free shipping. You'll get four of each pure ground burger so you can sample all the steak on a bun greatness. These burgers are crafted for a juicier, more tender experience, making your mouth water with every single bite. Don't wait. Go to omahasteaks.com. Use promo code TREAT at checkout and get $20 off the Burger Perfection Flight and discover your new burger obsession. Minimum order may be required. I am Elena Dries, nurse practitioner at Altrix Primary Care, located right here in Nashua, New Hampshire at 57 Northeastern Boulevard. At Altrix Primary Care, we are dedicated expert nurse practitioners who provide high-quality, comprehensive primary care services for people of all ages. From newborns to older adults, our nursing model of care is distinctive because it's unhurried, high personalized, easily accessible health care for you and your family. Visit us online at altrixpc.com forward slash Nashua or give us a call at 603-821-4009. That is 603-821-4009. Altrix Primary Care, changing the future of primary care for you and your family. Thank you. 
Are you or your loved ones in need of compassionate care in the comfort of your own home? Look no further than Heaven Sent Home Care. Heaven Sent knows the importance of personalized care tailored to your unique needs. Whether it is assistance with daily activities, medication management, or specialized medical care, our compassionate caregivers are ready to provide the highest quality of in-home care. The service provided by Heaven Sent Home Care extend beyond physical care. They also offer companionship, ensuring that you or your loved ones have some Someone to share stories, laughters, and meaningful moments with. Experience the peace of mind that comes with knowing your loved ones are in capable hands. Or visit us online at HeavenSentHomeCareLLC.com to schedule a consultation and learn more about the comprehensive range of services provided. Heaven Sent Home Care, where care and compassion come together. Craving a delicious home-cooked breakfast or lunch? Look no further than Cookie Steiner, Hudson's favorite dining spot. But it's not just about the food at Cookie's Diner. Their friendly staff provides top-notch service, making you feel like part of the diner family. Cookie's Diner, conveniently located at 222 Central Street in Hudson. They're open Monday through Saturday from 7 a.m. until 2 p.m. and Sunday from 7 a.m. until 1 p.m. Call-ahead orders are always welcome via DoorDash or by calling 603 603- 3880-3424 Cookies Diner where great food and fantastic service come together. The best deals in Nashua are at the River Casino and Sports Bar. $1 roulette, $2 pizza slices, $3 domestic beer. Check out our new 9-foot pool tables. Take a chance to win $200 during our famous Friday Chicken Toss. Open till 2 a.m. weekdays, 4 a.m. Fridays and Saturdays. Visit us online, therivercasino.com. The views and opinions of the following show do not reflect those of WSMN, its owners, and or associates. Lisa and Robin are two fun friends diving deep into conversations where nothing is taboo. They believe in eating dessert before dinner and wearing the bikini. They're allergic to labels, authority, and cheap shoes. Currently, they're launching themselves through life being the good time, bold enough to take risks and inquisitively asking what's next. They hail from New Hampshire, but they could be anywhere dressed in cute clothes. If they had to share a tombstone, it would read, Curiosity killed these cats. Your hosts, Lisa and Robin on the mic. Welcome. Welcome to Lisa and Robin on the mic. You are listening to the second hour. We are on WSMN, 1590 AM, 95.3 FM. You can watch, stream, and listen on WSMN.live as well as YouTube and Facebook. We have an exciting guest in the studio today. Who doesn't love fresh flowers? Sprinkle in some artistic flair and a modern twist on the floral design with a community of artists, experts in the respective field, and we have something. Perpetuating the 37-year-old Manchester Flower Studio, the newest floral concept in the greater Manchester area, Dew Collective, opened its doors on Hanover Street April of this year, providing more than daily flower delivery and special occasion support. Jennifer McLaren, corporate executive turned entrepreneur... Mm-hmm. Left into flower design this past fall through her partnership with Manchester Flower Studio, expanding her event planning business and pop-ups with local businesses. Her intention was to build something local that her three girls could be a part of and give back to the local community from the boots on up. Welcome, Jennifer McLaren. Thank you for having me. Oh, we're so excited. <laughs> I see you over flowers. She brought us two beautiful bouquets that you can see on the studio uh, yes, cameras. Yes, we'll take a picture. And post them on our page because oh, they are gorgeous. Had to bring the flowers. Yes. Right? So tell us. So tell us what flowers are in the arrangements. Yes. So these are some seasonal favorites. We have some double tulips in there. Um, the peach variety is peonies with some hydrangea, and then those green, funky, tall ones. Those are called bells of Ireland, um, which are really fun. And then you have kale pointing towards you. That's I what see that. that. Yeah, I see that. So I was just, like, oh, we could have a little snack, right? So if you get <laughs> hungry, go on in. Um, and then over here is a lot of peonies. Um, peonies for Mother's Day were very popular this year, so we had a few extras. So. Those are my favorite. I know, <laughs> fan favorite. That's actually all that I had in my wedding bouquet was only peonies. Oh, oh they're yeah, such a peonies. beautiful, dramatic, full flower. I absolutely love them. So I will tell you how um, we both 
um, do some support work for Greet Magazine. That's how we met. And we were at an event last fall, and there were all these beautiful flower arrangements on the tables. And I walk up to her, and I start saying, okay, how do we get some of these flower arrangements? i got to take <laughs> one of these home. And she's like, just take one. And I'm like, well, technically, I guess I have to like ask. And she's like, no, I made them. You can take them. <laughs> so she finds me the best one, right? And she gives it to me. And, and then we started talking about your idea for going from a event planning business, right, and now incorporating this. Yeah. Tell me a little bit what it's like to go from a corporate world to an entrepreneur world. Yeah. So that transition is uh, drastic. Yes. Right. So I um I have prepared executives my entire career since 2007 to be on shows like this. Um, I've never personally been the one interviewed. So <laughs> complete pivot, right? So I'm used to creating the messaging, preparing the individual to go on air. I did a lot of um, TV interviews back uh, at the first crash of Wall Street. Um, and then you know, worked my way up the corporate ladder, had some national um, corporate gigs in marketing and sales, always event planning. So I would be the one to hire the florist as opposed to actually, you know, hands on flowers. Um, there came a point where I was working on Zoom, endless hours it felt like, right, after COVID, um, and on projects that I had no accountability or ownership for after I finished them. Um, and I got tired of it. I really wanted to do something that would allow me to put my hands in the work that I did, um, grow something from the ground up. And also for my daughters to see and be a part of. Um, they would see mommy go off every day and I would get dressed a lot and they would say, wow, you look so good. Where are you going? <laughs> and I would say, I'm going to a board meeting. And they would say, a board meeting? Like, are you, sound fun are at you all. sitting on a piece of wood? What does that mean? Like, what is a board meeting, right? So... Instead of trying to um, show them into that world, I just completely pivoted into something more local. Um, and I wanted to be able to, to own a building, to have equity locally, um, to own a business that was meaningful in the community. And I found that in Manchester Flower Studio. So Janet Damaris, um, she is the kindest, most patient like I like Earthside Angel that you can think of. Um, she's been in the industry, so she she had a formal training in horticulture, um, and has been in the industry owning Manchester Flower Studio for 37 years, which in and of wow. itself is remarkable, right? So if you think about like a customer service trajectory, and even just how much heart she puts into the arrangements and the special occasions that she supports, um, it's apparent. And so much so that a lot of the people I interact with and meet in the town of Manchester share that with me. So it's just a really great legacy that I'm able to now carry on for her. Um, but I've, you're doing it slightly with like a, a different fun flair. Yeah. So it, you think of the floral shop and you think of flowers. Right. But you're so much more. It's like you took your marketing brain. Yeah. And just made it more beautiful by having flowers. Thank you. So I like to think of it that I took a lot of me and infused that into what Janet did. Um, so I'm from Connecticut. I've been a city girl my whole life. Um, I worked in New York for seven years, um, DC for another seven, and then moved up here and um, started the family um, right in Manchester's North End, right? So my girls are close. Um, I now get to um, work right downtown. It's so convenient. And then it's awesome to be a part of the, the community and fuse in the small quaintness of, you know, the personal touch. But I get to bring in the city life. Um, so I get to partner with artists um, that are renowned in their field. So I have a few um, that I'm really excited about. So Peter Noonan is one of my um, really great friends. Um, he does a lot of work. He used to work for the New Yorker magazine, so he was a, a renowned comic um, artist. And um, he created my logo. We worked through the whole brand transition of what Do That's Collective cool. is and then what that would be in my, in my shop, right? So I think when, when I look to inspiration of what I want to build in a business, it's um, – I also love being a hype girl, so we should probably add that part in too. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Peter has exceptional artwork that I get to then showcase in my shop, and it is for sale. And I've had um, lots of inquiries about uh, some of his pieces. They are on the higher end. Um, and I, I think what I look to do is really feature artists that have something unique and that's not what you will find in the store next door. So I do have two storefronts, one in Manchester, New Hampshire, and then also down in Newburyport, Mass., um, a lot of the style for paintings is oil and um, landscape. 
I'm trying to be more contemporary and pull in that city vibe. So that's where uh, Peter Noonan's artwork is really great. Laura Schneider is another great artist locally that I'm just astounded by the work that she does. It's very modern. It's very contemporary. I have an entire dice wall that I get to pair my paintings with. Um, And I was even teasing and playing with her. I love styling Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of home decor uh, interiors as well. So part of what you know, I like to play with is like, can we make this more interesting and like have one of the dice actually like in motion on the wall? Yes. Like, can it be tossed yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and tipped <laughs> on its side when it's hung on the wall? Right. So just playing with different things because it is a studio space and we get to have that flexibility with those big white walls. Um, I want each of my spaces to be a haven for creativity, for events. Um, we've started hosting client appreciation, arranging nights, um, birthday parties we're doing a lot of like kid type activities just because I am a mom and um, love having things to do with you my have kids these beautiful cookies that mm-hmm. they could paint yes. edible paint onto the cookies and oh, the kids my could goodness, yeah could paint them mm-hmm. we went to a flower arranging class for Mother's Day a couple of days before Mother's Day I took my sister-in-law and I thought oh I'm just gonna showcase this my boutique is gonna be my resume because I'm gonna work here mm-hmm. I'm changing <laughs> careers again <laughs> just yes, walking please. into the shop and <laughs> smelling the flowers yes. and being surrounded by flowers and I think there was you've also brought your flowers to businesses didn't yes. you bring your flowers to um, is it homegrown yeah. coffee roasters? Yes, 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 yes. To hometown coffee roasters. Yes. So you exactly. can get a coffee and buy flowers for your spouse. You I can get know. classy, bring flowers to the office. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Really fun. I've been fortunate in town. There's just so many businesses that are open to pop ups and partnerships and building each other up. And I think that's even how you and I gravitated towards each other when we first met. I mean, the great, great Bedford community is just so wonderful Lynn Zimmerman's fabulous right so Mm -hmm. I think that it's just a matter of like finding your your tribe and um, those businesses that are willing to embrace what is unique and what you bring to the world that could complement um, you know what they have as an offering I think is really fun to always unearth and and play with it right so play with it in ways that um, sure the coffee shop has no flowers on Mother's Day so we bring in a bouquet bar and then sell flowers on Mother's Day, right? So it helps me, it helps them, it kind of builds a better community all around um, just for the patrons that go there typically. So yeah, it's been a lot of fun. When I saw that, I'm like, why are we just thinking of this in 2024? Where, you know, because I think some of the things that you have as these creative ideas make so much sense that it's like, why aren't we doing that everywhere? Yeah. And that is the part that I love about being an entrepreneur is that you get to explore them. And if it doesn't make sense, you don't have to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. And if it does do it again and again because people want it. Um, Another really fun concept that we have is yoga in my space down in Newburyport. It's it's pretty spacious down there. I have 2,400 square feet. So even for like party rentals, we can kind of clear out a really big area in the back. We fit 24 individuals for our very first yoga pop-up and it was so fun. And (sighs) my instructor um, that I had partnered with, Michaela Neal, she's opening an Align um, Step in Strength Studio, which is a really cool concept as well. It's like a Stairmaster meets Barry's Boot Camp. If you ever tried those with like the treadmill and then the weight training, it's so fun. Um, so we'll anyway, yes, That's you'll have to come we down. Did it. You're downstairs at your right. Workout. Yes, come on down. Um, so really fun concept. We got to do a pop up at my studio. It helps open her to an entire network on do collective that isn't familiar with what she does and vice versa for me right so they get bouquet bar they get some yoga we did have some bubbles and champagne so it was just a very nice morning for everybody i love that like we're trying to build community and there is so many wins when you provide value for somebody and being able to partner together and i love hearing the idea that you know my business can bend to your business and I can benefit you and you can benefit me and we grow together and I love that. Another thing, I was driving home yesterday and I saw on a sign, it says, creating beauty is art. And I was like, and I was just thinking about how that is true. I was oh. thinking about art. We were, well, we were talking about fairies in the garden yes. yesterday. <laughs> and on my way home, I was like, you're right. Even the way you decorate your home, the way you dress. Yes. Like, because we talk about stuff that people, a lot of things are like, oh, that, you know. We are very superficial. Yeah, we are very environment 
oriented people because we are very affected by our environment. Sure. Um, you know, when we first, Same. we're very sensitive. Yeah. When we first came in, we were like, we can't have all these things. <laughs> we were like rearranging the studio. We brought, bought chairs. And right. We, well, we, we redesigned <laughs> that whole thing yes, out yes. there. Now yes. we're trying to redo, redo in here, but we're trying to leave missing. them with what they need, but also make it better. Right. And make space. Right. Make and space. I think in space is where you can be most creative. And Robin, you hit on one of the next um, campaigns that I'll be running. So in order to feature these artists, so I mentioned Peter, Laura, I have about six others that I work with that, again, they're specialists in their field. So I have um, a wood maker named Ron Los. I have um, Vern Orlesk, who's, she's a glass fuser, so actually like <gasps> takes dust glass. And she's right around the corner from us on Hanover. So we'll <gasps> really? have to like go into her studio yes. one time you come by. Oh she's fabulous. <laughs> um, but she makes these remarkable pieces of art and even charcuterie boards that are made of glass. So it mm. can be every day, but it's also just, exceptional to look at right um but my whole concept is what is art right and i have people come in and look at these really unique pieces that they're not they don't see Even in their day to day like my sister-in-law and i were like see that see that i want that i want we just I walked around wanting 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 all of I love this stuff that. because yes. it was like why does a vase have to be Functional. Exactly. <laughs> yes. It's functional. Yes. Right. But it could be beautiful. Yes. A lot of mine turn on their side. I have funky ones that like dip down in the front. And, oh, I love them. And to play with them, I love the sustainability theme too, right? So I end up adding in branches or different elements from nature, rocks even, right? That um, can serve as propping up the flowers without having to use that floral foam, if you've ever yes, seen that. Right. But that's like, that's like a thing of the past in my in my shop. I encourage everyone that I work with, like design anything that you can with And it breaks <laughs> and it gets all the dust oh, everywhere. And it's, and it's just not pain. good for the environment. Yeah. So, actually, so, I want to, so I do want to have fun, but I also want to know, and yeah. I, so we talk a lot about personal development, taking chances on yourself, self-care, self-love. Mm. So I'm curious to say, you know, you went from corporate mm. Wall Street America to what was the thing that took you to say, I'm going to go in all in on me. I'm going to bet on myself. Man, it was a bet too. And so it's still going like every day. But so like we're encouraging people to live yeah. their best life and to be like, you can create a world, you can create your life the way you want it to be. Yeah. And now we have someone sitting right here sure, that's sure. actually done it. So I'll... I'll just break it down. I um my midlife crisis probably hit pretty early. My dad had passed uh, two years ago, and it it just hit me in a way that was profound. Um, we don't have a lot of time on this world, right? And I want to make sure the time that I do have here is enjoyable. Um, I'm spending it with people that bring me the good energy that right. fuels my day. And my time is spent building something. So even the other day, I was like, "Geez, I'm crow, is this business gonna make it?" Yeah, <laughs> and. It, Yes. It doesn't matter because yeah. I've been building something for the past six months that I am so proud of that it's mine and mm -hmm. it's the stamp that I want to put out in the world and I'm going to keep doing it relentlessly, right? And I might have to make changes and pivots just to make sure that I can pay rent on a, on a monthly basis, but I'm willing to do that right. because it's something that I love. I, I was fortunate to have taken that time. I think the, um, the self-care to your point is really important when you're going through some of those really uh, uh, big moments in life whenever they hit right yeah. but taking that time to go in and think about what matters most and what your priorities are I, I spent the time doing that and I think that's why I was able to make the jump um I was actually on a pre-IPO track <laughs> before doing this that? jump so pre-IPO is when a company is preparing to go public on okay. the New York Stock Exchange okay um which means you're essentially building I you know we had a 250 person company that we were um there was so much private equity money being thrown into this company to build it for the future um, that we went from 250 employees to 2,500 within like a six month time period. Wow. So we were acquiring companies throughout the, the country to grow so quickly um, and then just hiring insane talent, right, from the industry that would like put investor stamp behind giving a vote of confidence that this is going to be a stock worth riding out once the company does go public. It was so grueling. And uh, I complained about Zoom post COVID. Mm. This was like, hit it on the road Monday through Thursday, I might be in New York going to investor meetings. And mind you, 
I was the only female in the room for majority of these these meetings, <laughs> like my entire career. Yeah. So that was also part of something that when I took a pause and was like, what do I want to do with my life? I wanted to stop working for the man. Like mm-hmm. I got tired of putting my energy into other people's buckets to see yeah. their pockets inflate. The underwork or overworked, underpaid concept couldn't be more true, right? right. And, and you get guilt and shame when your kid calls up, oh, you know, your kid is sick it. and, you know, vacation time is not, you know, you get, you know, you work for these people 365 days a year and yes. they're saying you get seven days, you get seven days of vacation. Forget it. They don't freaking care about you. Forget it. And I've had fabulous employers that have been very generous. And, and even with my children, I was working the whole time that I had all three um, and was granted six months vacation, right? Um, and job security. And to, to, to that end, my female boss <laughs> at that company, she gave me a promotion every time I came back. So That's like, awesome. I have definitely had supporters, female and male, my entire career yeah. that um, got me to the point that I it did uh, as early as it did. But at the same time, there's there's something in working for yourself and finding that um, secret mix that's like so uniquely you and then being able to share it with the world and <laughs> I just love that mine's with fresh flowers right <laughs> mm-hmm. and I think the other funny thing is how much I get to know as being a florist <laughs> oh yes everyone I keep it secret but like those flower <laughs> notes sometimes yes your hygienist your florist <laughs> and your um GYN well oh yeah <laughs> yes you phlebotomist yeah is you know you get you know people are vulnerable and really but, but vulnerable. I also think that but well to me my whole thing is we don't feel loved if we're not seen and we're not heard correct and we're always looking for it whether we are consciously aware of it or not hundred percent you know and and I love being a part of that process for other people yes yes, yes. so much so that it's like. Okay, Mother's Day is coming up. I know it'll be special because my kids are wonderful. But like, I just shared so much love with so many moms. Yes. Because I just have it in me to give, right? Well, it's almost like an mm. aphrodisiac or it's like some kind of a euphoric high when you are watching. S- when you can see that you have raised somebody else's vibration, that is euphoric. So, ye- so yesterday my daughter came home. She is on... She's getting ready to go to dental school. Amazing. So she's working for an oral, oral surgeon's yeah. office. And she had ran to the restroom out in the hallway. So it's public hallway in a an office building. So there is um, a mom in the bathroom. And there's a little boy, like, I don't know, three, four, maybe five. Um, she gets them all taken care of, washes his hands and stuff. And she's like, and you wait right here. And and so my daughter's in her scrubs and she's got her name tag on everything and they're talking as she's washing they're washing sure. their hands and um, she's like you wait right here while your do- your sister has to finish using the restroom <laughs> and she's like well I can take him right out here so she walked out and she's like oh yeah so they were sitting in the waiting room so she's sitting in the waiting room talking to this little kid and he's you know. I forgot what he was talking about. And she's like, really? Oh, sharks. He loves animals. <laughs> and he's like, he found some shells. No, so my my daughter is certified diver. Sure. Um, so she was talking about something and he's like, sharks. And she's like, you know, she was telling him like she had swam with sharks and Ooh. all this stuff. So the mom comes back in and Kayla, um, she gets up to leave and she's like, oh, the mom was like, you didn't have to do that. That's so <laughs> sweet. And she's like, well, you know, whatever the little boy's name was. She was like, I got to get back to work. Kayla, it wasn't even in the same doctor's office. It wasn't in hers. She was at the eye doctor's appointment across the hall waiting with this kid. And I'm like, the the energy and the vibration that my daughter, that, that we felt her retelling that story about her blessing that mom and how she impacted and changed that mom's day. Like, it's it awesome. was just such a blessing and a gift. And I can't, like, that's what you're talking yes. about is being able to, it's it's like a high when you can yes. watch people that you've actually touched somebody for the better. Absolutely, yeah. And you're and you're doing it with such beauty when you talk about like what is art. I have that concept too. I have the idea that your home can be art, your body can be art. Mm-hmm. You know, the way you dress is art. What you there is so much into how to make this more artfully. How do you go through life? absorbing it and then creating it absolutely yeah yeah and it's um 
I think it, you know, for me to be able to have a platform to showcase that for others, um, it's already starting to prove to be rewarding. So I think a lot of what I do with the flowers, um, I'm either inspired by the art or I'm finding ways to feature the art so that others can be inspired in the same way that I have Mm. been too. Um, and I, I hope to be able to rotate through. So this is an open call to all the listeners. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, we put it out that this is a microphone to the universe. Yes. We have free microphones to the universe. So whatever Thank you want, you. you put it here. Stuff happens in 24 hours I sometimes. can't wait. <laughs> yes. So it's at Do Collective on Instagram. Come find me. Um, but I am always looking for new artists to feature. Um, and I'm hopeful to start to be able to pair even the the flowers that I do source. I love the seasonality of a lot of what's here now, but it is May in New England, right? So we do, um, we are privileged that our season is now starting. Um, throughout the winter months, we do have to source flowers from elsewhere around the mm. globe, which is usually tropical um, climates. And South Africa is one of my favorite locations mm. to source flowers. They have some really unique varieties. Um, so just in terms of like the type of artists that I'm trying to feature and one of my concepts down in Newburyport, I'm hopeful to turn the entire shop into a South African um, safari. So oh. my aunt's friend just went on safari and she's a fantastic oh my goodness. photographer uh, who has just gorgeous prints that Again, I think it leaves you thinking of more and what else is in the world and what you can be inspired by and bring back. And um, then, like, the thing I love about art is I love possessing. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because I think whatever that is that that artist was doing, I'm right. really touched by art. I'm touched by music and all of that other stuff. Mm-hmm. But then I get to possess it. For sure. Like, I and get that's- to take it into my world right and that's the whole beauty of travel right so you go you go experience a new place new food uh dancing music art whatever it may Mm -hmm. be architecture is one of my favorites to take in when I'm traveling um and and you bring those pieces back with you right and they become part of like the structural design that you are as a human and story yeah and so as part of this concept like i'm even hopeful to be able to expand you know so bring in a south african photographer feature south african flowers hopefully do some yoga and mindfulness during the launch open up a shop right on main <laughs> street in st pete's yes <laughs> compare that with chihuly Right. Oh, my goodness, please. So I went out to Seattle um, last oh. fall and it was during Dahlia season two. So oh, it was just goodness. like complete mind explosion for me between Chihuly and then also the Dahlias are just exceptional. Yes. Um, so what's funny is when we were just taking notes because I was like, oh, I want to bring up this. But I also just wrote glass blowing yes. when you were talking about that. And then you started talking about the artists. Glass, and you artists. the glass and I was like, wow, yeah. there's some alignment. There's what's some the weird name? alignment here. Yeah. <laughs> what's the name of the glass? Studio Vern is the name okay. of the glass fuser that I'm working with in uh, Manchester. Um, and, you know, happen chance we meet just on a whim. I'm uh, I'm not shy. I think no. you've known that about me. I'm not shy either, <laughs> which is, uh, I saw you and I made like a beeline to right. you. <laughs> and I'm a very curious person once I find someone who's interesting to keep talking to. So, um, so Vern is that. She's just like complete enigma of an artist and love being able to partner with her. She ends up being on the board. So I meet her in Manchester, New Hampshire. She ends up being on the board of the Newburyport Art Association. And she's on the education committee there, right? So like small worlds collide. She's like, come on, you have a storefront that you're selling goods in in Newburyport. And I was like, yes. So now we're cross pollinating her Manchester studio down in Newburyport, for instance, right? And then again, and partnering with those local galleries to, to just be a, another conduit for these artists to get their work out. Um, a lot of times at the galleries, they are more nonprofit based and they're just featured to do more custom work with the, those artists that they're featuring. And then you have to have featuring. a person go into a museum. You right. want to touch pe- everyday people. Correct. Everywhere. Oh Every day. So that's a great theme we haven't chatted about yet accessibility was another reason that I'm on this venture um I've I've been very fortunate throughout life and have um I've traveled I've gotten to know people I found interest in you know a variety of things but I I did find accessibility at some of those echelons Mm -hmm. just annoying and unnecessary like (laughs) I love New York don't get me wrong but like there are other places in this world yes. and 
there are places with trees that we can call home, you know, and it just ended up kind of pushing me to want to make that New York vibe more accessible elsewhere. And I think that is probably another pushing point when you were asking, like, why this field? Mm. Um, I don't have New York and I love it and I miss it. Right. But I can bring it and I can share it with other people now. Um, I do hope to be able to offer like curated trips at some point through the Duke Collective. Yeah. Please. We'll have to keep we talking. We already have it planned with like St. Pete's. It's definitely uh, one. It's gosh, I love it down there. So that's where my dad was living. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So we were, we were talking, one of the things that we, so people ask me sometimes who is your audience and I think me. Yeah. Right. Take my age, take my sex, take my demographic, take my price, take all the things about me. But then me slightly different because I am married with no children, but I know moms. Mm -hmm. I know single moms. I know people who've been through divorce. I know people who have been widowed. I just know there's a community of people that after COVID, their lives have been different and have never gotten back to their before COVID lives. Mm -hmm. And I think when I say to people, what are you doing? And they go, oh, no plans and no whatever. And I encourage them to go out. Sometimes they're like, well, who would I go out with? I'm divorced now. Or who would I go out with my Mm. kids doing this? Yeah. And I think, well, we should make a community that totally we just do this invite. And now now you meet other people. Yeah. Look, everybody's on a journey. Yes. Every day, every point. And I think it's just a matter of like having empathy. So I think the end once, of the day. I think once people actually realize that, you know, our our opinions and our thoughts come from our experiences. Yes. And once you realize that, like, you know, getting into a keyboard, you know, battle with somebody about politics or religion and all that stuff, it's such a it's, a, it's such an energy downer drain. Yeah, it's for just sure. such an energy drain, but that's where you're focusing your energy. Right. And so we're spending time. But that's what's coming out of you. But then once you realize like I just said to life is like this is my life. And I I've said it before I don't like the word like this is my life. I like this is my journey. Yes. Because life feels so finite to me. You know, there's an ending and a beginning. A journey, you don't know when it's going to end. Life, you don't, you know, you don't know when it's going to end. No one's stuck. But it Mm -hmm. just seems more Mm -hmm. concrete Mm -hmm. on either end. And I like journey. And everybody, who they are right now is based upon the experiences that they've had. Totally. And have, we need to invite people to have new experiences. Yes. When I went into your shop, I've been in a million florist shops. I actually dated a florist back Ooh, before I got married. Interesting. And I thought, this is like, this is my world. And he never got me flowers. And I thought, this is what I want. I want the flowers. Yes. <laughs> like, you should bring me flowers every <laughs> time you, you see me. Yes. And he's like, that's work. You don't want that. And I'm like, I do want that. I want those in my house, in yeah. my apartment at yeah. the time. But like when I walked in, like I said, I've been in a million florist shops. I was in something different. Yes. I was, I had a unique experience and my sister and I, and I knew based on, you know, what I saw on Instagram, but a little bit about what I know you. And then I was like, my sister-in-law needs to experience yeah. this with Thank me. you for bringing her. Yes. She was fabulous. Isn't she fabulous? Oh, so great to I love her. her so much. Yeah. So, um, but, and then when she came through, you could see her mind mm-hmm. <laughs> spinning and I'm like, and she loves Newburyport and she has an office in Andover. And I'm like, this is perfect. These are the perfect experiences yeah. now that need to be brought. And I loved that we had that experience together because we are very fun people. The Mm -hmm. two of us are a good time. (laughs) No matter (laughs) where we go. (laughs) Could see that. (laughs) We're not bragging or anything. We're just, I have no idea what gave it away. But we look for that. You're, you look for that. You look for the fun and things. Your shop was beautiful, but it also had this certain kind of, I think it was the space in it. Mm. You had so much stuff in there, but there was all of this space and I felt like I could move around. It invited me to move around. And then I was like, what could we do here? <laughs> invite you in to my be head. curious. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> invite you to be curious. Yes, and I think exactly that's what right. we started out on this venture is like, hey, let's find more like-minded people. Let's find people that are on our vibration. Let's raise them up, celebrate them, mm-hmm. but let's try to like, I think our ultimate goal is like, let's do life together. Yeah, let's have a community. What are some of the things you're hoping to do with when you say you're like, you wanted to do these community sure. things? What else, what are the things? Yeah, so I um, I do sit on two boards in uh, Manchester too. So I'm working with both NeighborWorks and uh, Waypoint on a lot of their community activities. Mm-hmm. So I do think in terms of like building community, that's a huge component, right? And I think that even as a small business owner, there's still tons that we can all do to give back and rise that tide collectively. Um 
and and for all corporations as well like i've always sat on the side of like where that corporate funding goes um and there's always something that can be done so Mm -hmm. Mm. even if budgets are tight like work with the nonprofits, figure out volunteer days i think that there's um you know a, a lot of help needed um and then for me personally within the do collective agenda um I just want to grow what's fun and what people are picking up on. So, Mm. for instance, Taco Tour Manchester is a really big thing. Yes, Uh, it is. 20,000 people apparently flock those streets. And I have an associate who's from Hawaii. Uh, Her name is Anna Long. She's absolutely fabulous. And she uh, knows how to make lays, really fun Hawaiian lays. Lay Day in Hawaii is May the 1st. How cool. Right that. before Taco Tour. So we ended up creating Lay's for fun and then sh- shared them with all of the Taco Tour judges and then also the children, right? So it ends up just yes. being like a fun, loving thing on the street that like, I never knew I'd be making Lay's for Taco Tour, but right. <laughs> it's fun and people like it. So yeah. I'm pretty open book in terms of like what sticks. Um, this flower crown trend is really popular, especially down south. Um, for all ages, like people, adults come and they feel like they get their hippie vibes out, I guess. Um, kids love it cause it's super cute and they get to wear like succulent flower crowns. Mm-hmm. Um, Oh, so that's really interesting. So I lived in Hawaii I lived yeah. in Maui for 10 years and for your birthday, everyone just gave you lays and yeah. the picture is always like eyeballs because you Covered. got so many lays. I wonder if <laughs> flower crowns could be a birthday thing. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, right. So cool. birthday parties we can host, um, graduation parties i'm hosting tonight a prom bouquet bar um bouquet bars are the new sorry prom bouquets are the new corsage um and again i'm trying to like modernize them so pocket squares for the boutonniere um just making it like more more of a modern pop as opposed to like the really tiny detailing and they're still really beautiful but like just a different application yeah expression of of them different expression of them and i think that's what you do so beautifully is sometimes we have this idea of things are the way they always are mm-hmm. because that's the way they've been done because that's the way they've always been done. But to take it and just see it with a new set of eyes and to bring a new expression, you always look fantastic. Oh. Where do you shop? Thank you. <laughs> I feel like you always have great clothes that I don't oh. see everywhere. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm always like, where'd you get that? Yeah. So <laughs> during my travels a lot. Um, oh, okay. This is probably 12 years old. Okay. Also. And like, there were years I could not wear it. <laughs> and I was like, this will go to Goodwill tomorrow. And I, for whatever reason, kept it in the closet, right? Um, but the pendulum swings and then it fits again. And um, yeah. yep, it's unstained and unworn. <laughs> so I'm it's like it. brand new. Um, but yeah, I um, I shop in my travels. Like I do okay. a lot of boutique shopping. I try to find um, even clothing makers that are not as common. Um I don't love big box stores. And if I do shop at some of them, it's more like on the boutique side of them. So I would say like even when I was playing with company names, boutique and like Boo was a big brand of fixation for me because mm. I just love the small. I do too. I love the, individualized. I love, the, I love the idea that puts in my mind when you think about boutique. Mm. It's because we don't like being in a box and we don't like labels. I can't stand right. big box things. Same. I can't. And I'm a bo- boutique shopper too. Yeah. Um, but I always am like, what boutique is she shopping at? Because you always have, even at the event the other night, you had the shirt and I was like, where is the shirt? Uh-huh. You know, I just like, I loved, I always love, you always look beautiful. Oh, thank you. Thank you, you so beautiful. much. So sweet. And you too. Goodness. I mean, yeah, I like what's, I like to look for things that are different, different, yes. that's unique. And so your mind, is it, were you always creative as a child? Because yes. then you go into the corporate America world. Did you feel like I'm not expressing or did the events express the creativity so that you everything that I did I did with creativity okay um I even applied for law school this past year as part of my self-searching of the past two years yes um and I did get into one I ended up with drawing because do collective is like my jam and yeah. I can't leave it um but at the same time my, you know, my essay into law school was like, please accept me. I will be the first creative lawyer. And, <laughs> and we kind of probably I'm need bring that. My, art, right. my art to the law. Right. So yeah. my um, my brain kind of has always been left side. I mean, my mom wanted me to go to RISD. And it's so funny. I speak to Laura, who's 
a renowned artist, Brooklyn gallerist. And she's like, I was not allowed to go to RISD. And I was like, my mom like couldn't push me more. Like she was like, Drexel, RISD. That's all you can do is go do art because you're really good at it. Um, so yeah, I do feel like it was suppressed for a really long time. Um, I felt like I had to wear pants, suits and be Claire Danes on that awful show, whatever she was. Corporate. In. Yeah, it's so corporate, right? So um, I've shaken all that now and it feels yes. really good. Yes. Yeah. When I, um, I was going to be an air traffic controller. Wow. I wanted to be, that was a very specific field. I wanted to be that. And then I wasn't that. Mm. And then I went into corporate America and I thought this fluorescent lighting is such bad lighting. <laughs> and I have to wear in this one corporate consulting world, you had to wear, a, you could wear a pantsuit as a female, but the material had to match. Unbelievable. So you couldn't wear a blazer of a different material. Or that, fishnets. Yeah, no, forget that. Right. And so you couldn't wear this. And I just remember being like, but my clothes are how I express myself. And you're not even allowing me right. to express. And I would have, it would be a beautiful suit, but yeah. the materials not, might not match. I just felt so squelched in yes. every way, shape, and form that it was like a strangulation. Yeah, that, w that would be another big, um, if anyone's feeling that way who's listening today, <laughs> like do some inter work and shake it because there is another world out there and I think that what happens is we only know what we know yeah so I only knew that I wanted to be an air traffic controller and then when the test was ha I was not going to make it the test the test you have to test by 28 right because you have to be young for that career and then it, the test wasn't available to me at 28 I knew I had to do something else so it was like okay I'm going to do I'm going to make tons of money and I'm going to do this corporate thing because I didn't know that there were other things I could do right and so you just do the next thing. So I think one of the ways to try to find, you know, how do you know what you like, especially when you've been con like sort of contained by COVID, you weren't allowed to go, go to a flower arranging class, go to an paint by numbers class, like go do different things that you've never done because you don't know what you don't know. Yes. Well, I think be curious and we don't teach that. We don't teach our children. Well, we do until they get into school. Mm -hmm. And then when the, and I don't want to, poo poo on the school system <laughs> but there's a very narrow line and we don't we don't teach creativity yes we don't teach our kids to hey this is here is the formula you know we're going to do all this work to pass these tests and we're going to do sats you know and then it's college and then it's this we don't we don't expand like teach our kids who are you yeah just as a society who you? we who don't do you want to be yeah, yeah. Um, and that's my favorite thing about the arranging classes that I do teach. The ingredients are the same. The formula I share, but I let every individual take those tricks that I'm sharing and make of it their own. Well, principles, you know, totally. there's principles to put in place, but then, you know, if you stay in that guideline, that's going to create something beautiful. And so uniquely you. Right. And so it's. At the end, my goodness, I did three of those arranging classes within three days with different groups. Um that I was invited to participate in, in addition to the one that we hosted that Lisa, you had attended in Manchester. And um, I can't tell you how fun it is to see the end show of how different every single person's arrangement is. Um, and again, it's of these beautiful flowers anyway, so hopefully you can't go too wrong. But um, it was amazing that we all started different, you know, everyone started immediately and you'd look at someone and you're like, I like that, I want to do that. And then you're like, but I'm not doing that, right? And right. then at the end, you're like, how we all made very different things and how beautiful they all are. And I think that's how we are as people. Yes. We, if we can all understand we are all so different. Right. But we're all made up of flowers. Right. Correct. <laughs> and like who, who you get to touch and influence ends up impacting your patchwork, right, just as much as theirs. So I just think that there's so much to it just in the symbiotic, you know, people, I think the flowers. The, I, I, what nature. I feel from you is that I feel this big energy – of expanding and curiosity mm. and I and I love that and I'm like that's what I'm like we're encouraging like everybody to do yeah is to to be curious and like well how can I take this art and how can I expand it how can I reach more people and you're actually giving people a gift putting right. it in coffee shops and aligning with artists and you're giving opportunity you're creating opportunity mm -hmm. for other people and I think that this area I think all of New Hampshire, and I think Massachusetts too. Like Boston is a great town, but we don't celebrate artists. We don't celebrate art and culture as much. You know, it's we've got 
<clears throat> we don't support local like businesses for restaurants, you know, new restaurants popping up. Sure. You know, it's all these guidelines. We don't have, we don't do anything to draw more and more artists in. Well, this is when I was like, because I immediately my marketing brain goes and then my real estate brain goes. Yeah, and, bring, and it, start, bring it both. <laughs> like, and so one of the things I thought that was so genius about the 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 flowers in the coffee shops mm -hmm. are coffee shops can be a stark looking place. But the minute you add flowers. So every time I throw a party, I have flowers at my party because everyone's like, oh, it's so beautiful in here. It's like my same house. Yeah. It's just six. It doesn't take vases. much. It's right. just six vases. And mm -hmm. you are now I have just like when you put lipstick on when you feel really tired, people look at your lips instead of your eyes. Yeah. And you're just like, oh, you look nice. And it's like, no, I look tired, but I have lipstick on. <laughs> right, you're distract. You want them to I'm look drawing at a your eye. Right. I'm drawing your eye. I'm right. drawing your eye to something beautiful. Well, and warm it up too. Right. It yeah. actually gives it and some life. And and personality yes. and happiness that people just have emotions when they look at it. So I, you know, I hope that's what they do and what they bring to yeah. others. But yeah. think of all the businesses that have people that come through multiple time of day. Just like, let's think of all the businesses. I think of coffee shop is a great one because people come in very transactionally. And now you give them this wall of beauty that actually serves a function to both the customers and then the people working there. Do you want to work someplace and you look at this wall of flowers yes. as the, and then they get taken away well, and, and then the next you, day and, you get another and one? Can you buy the flowers? Yes. So yes, that's, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, that's, no, that's the beautiful thing is like yeah. how many times that people come in for coffee or at the end of the day they're come in and like I'm going to get a coffee before my ride home. I've got an hour commute. It's the also yoga studio. But I know. Also, the convenience of it. We've Correct. talked about how sometimes bad is convenience can be bad. Yes, this but is when convenient you're convenient, good. This is a great convenience because how many times I know one person. I know one person that we're in a coffee shop instead of having to make the trip, and it's right there at their fingertips. So you for sure that would get flowers and bring them home, and it, it makes you think of huh, I'm going to touch someone else. So you're passing that gift yeah. on. It's the always paying it forward. Right. Like when I think yes. my husband goes in and buys a coffee somewhere and then comes back and brings, because he always brings me flowers. He's sure. Good about that. And so then good. He, he brings me flowers. My whole day is better. Yes. Agree. Agree, and it's, agree. it's a Tuesday. It's not Mother's Day. So or... how about barber shops is a good one? Yes. yes. I ended up having my neighbors, and it's a really cool concept down in Newburyport. Um, it's called Banter is the name of the barber shop that's my neighbor. Um, and they have, uh, I think they have billiards and shuffleboard inside. It's kind of like a speakeasy club that they're That's moving towards, cool. like a membership club on a monthly basis. Um, so they were selling my bouquets for Mother's Day because all of their patrons are male, right? So it and do they of, want to make another stop after no, that? No, they and don't. And it's the same with the yoga studios and the smaller workout places that I think in this, I think this day and age people prefer a lot of times to have like I'm a big humble warrior mm -hmm. um, advocate so you know as as much as like you could expand that line I think it's helpful to kind mm -hmm. of make it more convenient for people yeah um, and and just to talk on the big box really quickly so I've had tons of questions like what's the difference between Trader Joe's or supermarket flowers versus what you have mm. the difference is the processing time for the shipments that are coming in from overseas um, so a lot of times the supermarket roses, they won't open, uh, they're smaller, uh, they don't smell. So a lot of the fragrance gets taken away from that process. Um, and then there's no custom touch on it as well. Right. So hopefully the local florist, I mean, I'm here for it. So anybody who wants to come shop local instead, um, and also when, you know, you, you go to the store and you have the, you don't have these two-toned tulips. Right. I'm, a tu I'm a tulip girl, but yeah. these two-toned tulips are phenomenal. Yeah. And you, you just have, they are so, there's so many, like every flower is beautiful, but you have so many different types of flowers. And then you when you were teaching us, when she was teaching us how to put in the arrangement, she says, just try them in your hand. Put these three th things in your hand. And I'm like, well, I want those too. <laughs> it, it wasn't, but you have so many different things that was unique in such a way that if you got that even if you got flowers every week your yeah. spouse brought you flowers every week you'd be like oh I you're love still these. the best thank you yeah. Yeah. and they, these are different <laughs> right you can give the same thing 52 weeks a year and never give the same thing twice sure mm -hmm. yeah it's so true yeah so, true. so i have a question yes. for you lupins yeah, five minutes yeah yep are they perennial up here or are they annual up here i don't know 
I don't even know what a lupin is. <laughs> It's the side of the road on 93. Oh, those are beautiful. They're like the big cones. Oh, I know exactly what they are. So I just planted some of those. I do know what they are. Thank you. I planted them. Thank you for the reminder. We had a monster one. Literally, the flower itself was probably two feet tall. It was huge. Yeah. So I thought, I thought they, because they grow wild, I thought that they would recede. So I let some of them fall, but yeah. when the pods, I took and sprinkled them all, all along. I have an English garden nice. that goes along our pool. Yeah. Like, I'm going to put some up here. Nothing has come back yet. Year, one year through? Because sometimes it takes a little bit. So I didn't so know Fox if it was a biennial. Gloves? I didn't know if it was a biennial, but we just got two more. And they're almost like a Cabernet Sauvignon color. Oh, pretty. Ooh. It's very like a burgundy. Gorgeous. Rich. Yeah. So I think foxglove, lupin, and some other ones are every other year. They will they will bloom. So you have to. So that's what I learned about foxglove, which I learned was poisonous. But you put some in this year, then you put some in next yeah. year, then you put some in this year, and then they start self. There's always some coming I have, up. I don't even have the leaf coming up. No, I, I'd, I'd still just give it some time. Yeah. Um. So I end up sneaking in um, Dutch tulip bulbs from one of my Amsterdam trips. <gasps> yeah, it was yes. pretty pretty spectacular. And they are the most gorgeous tulips, so it was well worth it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it took a while even for those. I love tulips. So I don't think, like, I think I planted it, them in the fall, but it wasn't like that first spring they popped right up. So... Hmm. Just give so it I'm some time. It, I won't give up on it. Yeah, yeah, we're in a really cold climate here in New Hampshire. And I feel like the weather has been really cold. It yeah. has barely gotten, it's, you know, four, I don't know, 40 degrees at night. But I will interrupt and say that there is a sculptor oh, we have on two. Pine Street. We have two sculptors on Pine Street, and they're sculpting mar- marble on Amazing. Pine Street. Amazing. Can't yeah. wait to see. So, so we said we were going to tell mm-hmm. people when they popped <laughs> over so I they can it. start going over. And tell people where they can find you yeah. on social media. Yes. How to partner with you for any kind of event. Yeah. So tons of activities coming up. Check me out on www.dewcollectivecollective.co. It's one of those new age websites, so there's no M at the end. Um, Do Collective, all of the events will be there. We will be launching Meet the Artist series, yoga series throughout the summer in both locations. I'm partnering with Bar Life in Manchester, which I'm really excited about too. Um, Fresh Press Cafe for Smoothie Bar. It'll be really delicious on top of healthy. Um, And then uh, Mommy and Me classes. And probably more like crown type parties. So Flower Crown, I've had requests for fairy gardens. I'll get into it. (laughs) <laughs> Just not right now. Um, so, yes, we'll be doing a variety. And reach out to me for anything that custom or birthday party or celebration or client entertainment or board meeting. Or um, event planning. Or, or event or... planning. Yes, we definitely do custom arrangements. I'm working with the two big hospital systems in the next week in Manchester for their annual galas. So, um, you know, and have worked with a ton of venues within the state. So, and weddings. We do weddings. Goodness. Um so please reach out, Jennifer at dewcollective.co on email, and then at do collective on Instagram is my main. Do you push. have a Facebook page too? I no. do, but it's just kind of what gets fed from Instagram. So yes. Instagram is really popular in small business. Like, whoa, didn't know. <laughs> like, leaving the pre-IPO track, thought I was busy, burnt out, thought I was going to be a small business owner and just like walk in the park. Not a walk in the park. <laughs> Social media is a full-time Welcome. gig. Yes. yes. <laughs> Social media is a full-time job. So I'm on it. Sure. And I will tell you, you can help her if you are not in the area and you want to help her. If you leave a five-word comment, five word comment, it boosts the algorithm. post algorithm. Awesome. Yeah. So we're all about algorithm engagement. Smart. I like that. Yes. Good work. Yes. Yeah, so always oh, say, these are really beautiful flowers. Five words. <laughs> it's free. You're on Instagram anyways. <laughs> oh, you ladies That's are right. amazing. That's thank right. you for having me. This yes, is so great. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. We love you and we will love see you, you soon. I think we're going to be on in like one minute though. The music comes on. So please visit the Do Collective in Manchester. If you see her flowers and was it hometown coffee roasters, any kind of pop ups, please come to an event. I will start announcing them on the radio because we're going to start. We have to get out in the world. We want to go. What you should do is send us a calendar. If you send us a calendar, we can post it on our page. We'll do. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Lisa and Robin on the mic. WSMN. See you next Thursday. Have a great week. 
USA News Update. President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump have finally agreed to debate each other.